Hey everybody, this is Josh McKinney, and I just want to welcome you to episode 150 of the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu show. So we have a return guest, uh, Chris Wojcik. He was on the show a, a while back, and this was a, at a time that we were looking at Chris Wojcik, the writer, and we got to ask him a lot of questions about his writing process and all kinds of different things. Of course, Chris was on the show because I knew him as a competitor. Now, Chris, the competitor, has an even bigger name uh, and uh, ha has really done some really big things, beaten some really tough guys, um, just uh, just got a win over David Garmo, just had a win over uh, Gabriel Almeida. And what we really focus on, he placed fourth at the ADCC West Coast Trials. Keep in mind that the 77 kilogram division, the division he placed fourth, there were 256 competitors. And uh, minus the guys that were already qualified for ADCC, these are the 256 best 77 kilogram grapplers in the country. And there, that's a, that's a lot of matches. That's a lot of fights uh, to have over the course of two days. That's a lot of uh, mental wear and tear. That's a lot of physical wear and tear. And um, what was cool for me is I actually got to watch it live. I actually got to uh, stand on the sideline for a lot of the matches and uh, and get excited and, and yell and cheer for Chris while he was on this run. And so uh, I think you guys are really going to love the perspective of uh we, we pretty much spend like 20 minutes breaking down uh all of trials and um each match in i think you guys are gonna love it it was not the plan for me on this episode but as we started going through each match i was like oh this is this is amazing stuff this is his his mentality uh how much on the same page he and jeff seraphin were jeff wasn't there but just seeing how much those guys are on the same page, asking them, you know, you can listen to Jeff's interview last week, asking Chris and Jeff some of the same questions, they almost had word for word some of the same answers. Even my students that I am like so on the same page with, uh, that they, they listen to every episode of my podcast, they know my opinions. I feel like most of them, it's still not like that. We're working towards that goal, right? To be on the same page. But it really feels like Jeff and Chris, tw a 20 hour drive apart, were still on the same page at ADCC Trials. And uh, I think you can listen to both interviews and you will really pick that up uh, between the two. There's kind of like a, a subtle thing uh, to pick up on this interview if you listened to Jeff Serafin too, or if you decide to listen to Jeff Serafin after this. Um, but yeah, this is going to be a fun one. Chris is a really cool guy. Like I said, we're in week three of the four week Chicago takeover of the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu show. Uh, hopefully, we've got some new Chicago listeners uh, coming in and, and, and enjoying the show. If you guys are here, we would love if you stayed. Uh, you know, we're Midwest people. We hate anyone that's not from the Midwest, right? No, I'm just joking. If you guys have ever been to the Midwest uh, of America, it's like the most polite place probably that there is. And I don't think many Midwesterners hate many other people besides, of course, other football teams and whatnot. But anyway, I'm rambling. Let's go ahead and jump into this interview with Chris Wojcik. All right, Chris, how are you doing, man? I'm good, good, how are you? I'm doing good. Uh, we're talking just a little bit, got to train together to, this morning. Yep. Uh, that's your normal training Wednesday, right? That's your normal yep. routine? Uh, yeah, so usually the training kind of depends on what's coming up. Uh -huh. um, so we, uh, you know, nothing is really coming up at the moment for, you know, Nogi, so it was kind of just what, it, we haven't done leg, leg lock training in a while, so we did leg lock training. Uh, and, you know, we try to do wrestling. Monday, Wednesday, and usually Friday too. Okay, sweet. So you, um, with that, what's your, what's the rest of your schedule look like for the rest of the day? Yeah, just normal training. Oh, uh, normal training. Yeah. So I do. Uh, we do our Monday, Wednesday, Friday are kind of three hard sessions. Uh, then Tuesday or Wednesday, Monday afternoon. I told you I lifted. Uh -huh. um, I usually do a drill session as well on those days. So I try to train hard in the morning. I'll do a lift, and then by that point, usually I'm very, I'm fatigued. So mm -hmm. then I just do my technical 
you know, drill session at the end. Um, Tuesday and Thursday are the off days. Mm -hmm. So Tuesday, usually I, I do my privates on Tuesday and Thursdays uh, and Saturdays. And so I do privates. I'll do a, like a moderate training on Tuesday and Thursday. And then uh, Saturday, I usually train hard once on the weekend. Okay. So either Saturday or Sunday on the yeah, weekend. Yeah. Okay. And then the other day's off too? Uh, yeah, the other day is either off or teaching. Okay. Depending on. When you take a day off, what does it look like? Do you do anything with recovery? Do you do, what, what is kind of your typical day off? A day off, um, I do a lot of writing on my day off because I have a lot, you know, time. Uh -huh. um, and I have more energy, right? Because I have like mental energy, right? Because mm -hmm. usually at the end of a day full of jujitsu, I'm like, my brain is fatigued, mm -hmm. you know? So I might have like, I might train for four hours and then I have time in the evening mm -hmm. to work, but I'm like, you know, nothing I, produce during that time is going to be very good yes you know so i'll do a lot you know i can like on a day off i could probably write like five thousand words you know which is quite a bit because uh -huh. i have just all the mental energy and then i always try to especially in the summer i always try to go outside in oh, okay the, you know like make sure i go outside on a day off like i try to go outside every day but like on a day off if i don't make it happen you know make yeah sure go then you'll stay inside the like, whole day and yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. you have to like go see friends or you know the lakefront or you know something like that that's cool. How is your uh, writing? We talked a lot about it last time you were on the podcast, but how is it? Uh, how is it going right now? Are you writing on anything different lately? Uh, I know you did. I think since the last time you started your premium email list, yeah, so right? So a lot has actually changed in the writing since we last talked. Because the last time we did the podcast, it was like October, probably. I think so. October, November, uh -huh. something like that. Um, so the last time I think we talked, I had started writing on Quora, uh -huh. which is like a question and answer website. Yeah. And at the time, so I published 90 answers on Quora and the cumulative total, uh, I know this cause I was writing about it the other day. Uh, my first 89 answers had 6,000 views. Okay. Which is averages to about 65 views per answer. Okay. My 90th answer had 135,000 views. Okay. And so that kind of. Once I went viral once on Quora, I kind of was able to figure out the system a little bit. Uh -huh. So in the last nine months on Quora, I've gotten like, I'm at like 10.5 million views on oh Quora. Oh my gosh. So that's, you know, that's been great. Like you don't make a ton of money through the Quora stuff, uh -huh. but it's a great like brand awareness. Yes, for right? sure. Um, and so then that kind of sends readers to my medium. It sends people to my sub stack, yeah. sends people to my free ebooks. I have all that stuff on there. Um, and so that has, that was one thing that I was really focused on for about, probably till about July with the writing. And then I started to shift and I kind of, I'm going to probably move off of Quora by the end of the year and focus on Twitter and LinkedIn. Okay. Cause those pl pr platforms are kind of a little bit more lucrative uh -huh. financially. Um, but yeah, that's kind of what I'm doing with writing. That's cool. So what is, do you kind of have a, a vision, a goal, a place you hope writing will take you? So I guess when I think about writing, well, um, when I think about my career in writing, one thing that's nice is I can do it forever, uh -huh. right? So like I can't compete in jiu-jitsu at a very high level forever. Yeah. You know, like when I'm 35, 40 and everything's mm -hmm. breaking, I can still train, I can still compete if I want to, but... It, you know, your prime, is, it's real, right? Yeah. Your father time <laughs> defeats us all or something like that. Yeah. Um, and, you know, your prime comes and goes. And with writing, I think you can just kind of, you can just keep doing it. So it's like when I'm done competing, I want to have something that I can kind of put the same energy that I put into jujitsu. That, that makes sense. So uh, for you, something you said, you t uh, I want to say it was on your Instagram just a few days ago. It was that you uh, were going to eventually write a novel and that we could hold mm. you to it. Yes. Is that, is that the plan? Is that um, something? So I don't know if I, I'm going to be a not. So I'm actually in a few months probably I'm going to put out a uh, essay collection. Uh -huh. I've done it like I've written a lot and I just have all this stuff and I don't know what to do with it. So yeah. I'm like uh, I'm going to put it into a book of essays. Okay. And I'm going to see what you know. It's because the thing about like writing on the internet is you just have to try stuff yeah. and just say, okay, that didn't work or uh -huh. that did work. Right. Like I put out a free ebook on jujitsu and I still get like downloads every day on that. Uh -huh. So that's done well. I put out a different ebook, uh, 
on stage fright, performance anxiety, didn't do as well. Mm -hmm. So that one, you know, we'll try something else. Um, and I really, the novel is kind of a bucket list thing, uh -huh. you know, and the thing about novels, at least in my experience, is you need time to write them, you need time to edit them, you yeah. need time to develop characters, all this, you know, it's like a completely different thing that I don't have time to do while doing jujitsu as much as I do. So mm -hmm. it's like, it's something that I want to do, but it's going to have to wait. I actually, I wrote the first draft of a novel in the COVID quarantine. It took me about three months to write the first draft. Um, and I just, it's just sitting there. What, what was it to. about? It's about wrestling. All it's right. like a, it's kind of like Vision Quest meets Euphoria. All right. So I don't know. I, I like it. I think it's a good story, but we'll see uh, when I come, when I, when I finally decide to publish it, what happens. All right. Sweet. Does it have a name? Uh, it doesn't have a name. All right. All right. It's untitled. All right, man. That's a good teaser. <laughs> That's a good teaser. <laughs> yeah, one day. Uh, so the, I really wanted to talk to you. I know you am sure you've talked to a lot of people about this, but I know that there are points in this that will be so helpful for uh, listeners. But I wanted to talk to you about the, the West Coast Trials Run uh, mm -hmm. and just kind of start out uh, just a, a few months before I got to actually talk to Jeff a little bit about it. Um, but just for context, you're, uh, you lose at East coast, you lose a tough match at East coast yep. and now you're turning it around and you're going to go to West coast trials. Where is your mind at? What's your training at? What do you kind of, what, what's the feel heading into the tournament? Um, going into the West coast trials, I was... I felt more prepared than I felt for almost any other tournament that uh -huh. I've done. I was like, I, st I watched everything I did wrong. I was like, there's no way that's going to happen again. Mm -hmm. um, if I have a rematch with whoever, with uh, Placido, who I lost to, he's super tough. Mm -hmm. It's really hard to beat in that rule set. I was like, I know exactly what I need to do to not make the same mistakes that I made last time. Um, I was healthy. I was, you know, wasn't dealing with too many injuries at that time. Um, and I had a pretty good weight cut. So everything leading up to the tournament was really good. I did a lot of cross training too. I went to B team. I trained with, uh, I went to Henzo in Austin. Um, I went to Toledo to train. Uh, I did a lot of, you know, lead up training, different kinds of training, giving myself a bunch of different looks. And everything I saw kind of helped me, made me realize like I'm prepared to do well in this. Uh huh. And so then I, you know, then I just went in the tournament and, you know, things went well. So, uh, tournament, you win the first round really clean. Second round, you have Cody Steele. Yep. And I was standing right there on the barricade. The feel of the room was very intimidating. I remember thinking, man, if I'm Chris in this situation, I'm intimidated. There are three cameras on Cody. Uh, uh, Hanato and uh, a William Tackett are sitting right in front yep. of me in the barricade. And I'm just looking around going, man, not... Not a lot of people in this building are rooting Chris Rojic right now, you know? <laughs> yeah. What is that feeling like? What is your, you know, in the lead up before you step on the mat, what, what are you feeling in that? Um, so it was funny when I, so Jeff posted, they, Jeff texted me and Jack the day before when we landed about the brackets and we landed and Jeff's like, Chris has Cody second round. And in my head, I'm like, fuck, am I allowed, am I allowed to swear? Oh, yes. I'm like, I'm like fuck i got cody and then uh jeff says in the chat just like that's what we wanted and i was like right okay yeah never that's, mind. What, that's we not what we yeah. wanted we're not we're not we're not worried um and so then you know i'm but i'm thinking about it i'm like you know of all the top seeds i felt like cody was the best matchup for me mm -hmm. um the thing is i had to manage my energy well on him mm -hmm. and i had to you know fight smart yeah um, so that was why I sat right away mm -hmm. uh, going into that match. The the feeling right before was, I just I felt like I was like I can win if I do everything right. Yeah. Um, and I also was like, just I was, I was really focused on the positives. I was like, if I lose, it's just like oh Cody Steele won the first round. Mm -hmm. You know, if I win, that's you know, big. That's big, right? Uh -huh. He was I think the number three seed. Two, I think. Number two? I swore he was the number two. He was either two or three. Uh, okay, he could have been three, but... Tackett was one. Uh -huh. He was either two or three. No, yeah. you're right. He was two because uh -huh. he got third at the uh, yes, East that, Coast. Yes, that's what and, it was. He was two yep, then. So he was two. Um, and then the match goes, and I sit to guard, and I was trying to shoot leg locks. Uh, and as the match is going, I'm like, he's got no answer for my guard. Mm -hmm. He's not going to 
pass my guard. There's no chance he passes my mm-hmm. guard. Now I'm like, Maybe I can wrestle up. Maybe I can enter a leg lock. And he, his defense was really good. Yeah. You know, he shut down all my leg attacks. Um, I felt like I kind of was holding back a little bit. When I rewatched the match and I watched the guard work, I'm like, yeah. I, was, I should have been more aggressive. Yeah. So the match ends and it goes to overtime. And in my head, I'm just like, this is three-minute overtime for trials. I'm like, this is what we train for. Yeah. We're doing you know, three-minute wrestling rounds for you know, months prior. And I also was like, he doesn't know I can wrestle. Yes. And he thinks he's, you know, the suplex guy. And I'm like, I got to out-wrestle the suplex guy. And so I was also, you know, if you watch my stance in that match, I'm standing very low because I was like, if I stand up and uh-huh. he gets under me, I'm going for a ride. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I, you know, I started wrestling. I got in on a shot right away because he was standing a little bit uh, upright. Uh-huh. And I got in on a single that I've drilled like 47,000 times. You know, one of my go-to uh, single leg takedowns. And so I go for the takedown and I get in and I'm like, oh shit, I'm in on his leg. And then I work my way up and I get a standing rear body lock. And he hooks my leg and I was like, oh, uh uh-oh. Because he had my leg hooked and you remember that? Uh Uh-huh, yes, I do, I do. So I tried to roll with it Uh to uh, get to the back. Um, I could, I should have done different things from there to finish that takedown. And I think I could have if I had another opportunity. Mm -hmm. But I just, in the moment I decided to roll, the scramble goes and we come back up on standing. Uh huh. And I'm like, so the way the ADCC judges that, you know, from what things like guys like Dante have told me, it's like they care about who shoots and where you finish. Uh huh. Right. So if you, I shoot and we finish standing, then I win that takedown because I initiate the sense. sequence. Right. Yeah. So then I'm like, okay, I just got to make sure he never gets in on my legs and I got to keep shooting. Mm-hmm. And so I got in on his leg one more time, I think. Uh, towards the end of the match, I had a sequence where I was shooting. I got stuck around his ankles, and I was just trying to kind of trip him the whole like for a couple minutes, or maybe maybe it, was, it felt like a couple minutes. Uh-huh. It was probably like thirty seconds. Um, it did feel like forever <laughs> that you were doing that trip. Uh huh. And then the match ends, right? And then there was a really you remember there was a it really was long forever. there was a I really do. long break. Um, and in my head, I'm like, there's no way I lose this unless it's bullshit. Yeah, I was ready to flip the switch and go nuts and start throwing barricades. <laughs> I was. There was no question. I could even see the body language of everybody. There yeah. was no question. You won the match. Yeah. You won You won the first five minutes and you won the next three, you know? Yeah. Uh, there, there was no doubt. And so, uh, yeah, the, the pause, though. Yeah. It took a bit, huh? It, it took longer than I was expecting. Um, but... You know, and also Jack was in my corner and uh-huh. Jack was like, he did nothing. He did, he did nothing. nothing. Yep. And it was, you know, it was a kind of, it was kind of crazy because uh-huh. it was like the energy was big. I saw, I remember seeing out of the corner of my eye, I remember seeing Mo Jassim walk over and in my head, I'm like, Mo's doing this because he thinks I'm going to get suplexed. Yeah. And that's why he's here with the camera. And I'm like, there's no way in hell. He's going to have to kill me before he suplexes mm-hmm. me. Yep. Um, and, and then the, you know, the ref raised the hand and I was super, you know, super pumped. And after that, I was like... I can beat anybody here. You I were think. in after that. Yeah. You were I sharp. I felt like that moment, that like it was just a ref decision, right? But that moment kind of gave me, it gave me so much confidence. Uh-huh. I, was like, it was, I was more confident the rest of the trials than I have been for any of my matches. Mm-hmm. And I felt that kind of, that confidence has kind of carried over and I still feel that when I'm competing right now. That's awesome. That's awesome. What, let's, let's go here. Um, in the next few matches, you have two more that day, yep. right? And uh, you start to, you have to come down after that because you have to go to sleep. You have to compete the next so morning. So it was one more that day. Oh, it was one more that day. Yep. Okay. Five on Sunday. Five on Sunday. All right. And so you still like biggest win of your career, right? Yep. At the time. You have the biggest win of your career. You're still in it though. Yep. You've got to fight. How are you staying focused through the night? Did you sleep that night? What was I kind slept of- like a baby? I slept great. Um, I just I got in a really good flow, and I was like, you know, I just felt I, I felt really good about. I had a really nice body lock pass in the uh, last match of the first day, and it was uh-huh. a tough guy. He had beaten two guys by leg lock on uh-huh. the, who are like regulars on the IBJJF circuit. He beat Austin Aranda yep. right before me, and Austin's got great. Uh, you know, he's got a good heel hook. He's a tough kid. He's really mm-hmm. flexible, and I was like, oh, he's, you know, he's a tough dude. Um, and he was hard to get, you know, get in on once I got on the body lock though, I was, uh, 
I was able to get past his guard. I knew, I was like, okay, he's going to be shooting for leg locks. He's going to mm-hmm. be countering the leg locks and going to the back. That's mm-hmm. kind of his what I saw from this guy. And we watched both his matches. Jeff did too. And between every match, I'm texting Jeff and we're going through scouting reports on everything. Um, and actually, one thing before the Cody match, I remember I watched Tackett versus Cody. In the, I was sitting on that warm-up mat. Uh-huh. I watched Tackett versus Cody at the East Coast Trials. And I'm watching it and I'm like, I could beat this guy. Yeah. You know, and so I had kind of that like mojo that i could beat anybody there Mm -hmm. and i felt very i felt i was really calm i was honestly i was just happy to be done with the weight cut because the weight cut kind of sucks you know uh getting on a 77 is hard for me Uh uh-huh i i remember yeah i remember talking to you before the tournament started and had the same conversation with that you said with jeff hey that's that's the best matchup for you dude that is it like I'm like, you're going to beat that guy. You're going to be the number two seed. Yeah. You know? And uh, yeah, sure enough, you did. But you kept that flow. Your warm-up goes good the next morning. Yep. Everything just feels... Does it feel like a normal competition? Does it feel different? No, it wasn't a normal competition. Uh You know, it was like... It was... The energy was like... It was very intense. Yeah. You know, it was like... Because it's not like, you know, with the IBJJF, it's like everything feels much more controlled, I feel like. It's mm-hmm. like you're in the bullpen. You can't leave the bullpen. You, uh-huh. you know, the ref ring coordinator comes over to you and brings you, escorts you to the mat. Uh-huh. You know, for ADCC, it's like there's music playing. You can slam. You, you know, it's like <laughs> the Wild West a little bit. It is. And that's kind of what drew me to it a little bit in the beginning when I started watching and, you know, trying to actually do the trials and stuff. And, you know, the second day, it was like just more intense than the first day uh-huh. i felt like because now it was like okay all the guys like the we just we cut the field in a third uh-huh um and so it was you know then i had a, a tough guy from uh gary tone in the school uh-huh. first match on uh sunday and i remember so jack this is a, kind of a silly story but jack and gary tone were wearing the same hat <laughs> And so Jack was like, he, he texted Jeff. He's like, Jeff, I gotta be, I'm going to beat Gary Tonin in coaching. <laughs> and so now we have this joke that Jack beat Gary Tonin. Dude, that's a win. Yeah. That's a win right there. <laughs> I like that. Um, but that was intense because he had Gordon and Gary in his corner. And it's like me, Jack Paul, and Melanie in you know, the mm-hmm. other corner. And yep. like, you know, it was like we kind of had this like, it was like we were like, you know, it was like who, who, who the whole weekend it was like, who the fuck is this guy? Yeah. You know? Um, and that was cool. I kind of like, I liked that feeling. Uh-huh. It, w- it was like fulfilling in a way. It was, it was really fun to watch. It was really fun to, yeah. to get, it was really cool to actually be right too on the, uh, dude there, I think there's a dark horse. I think there's somebody who's really tough in this division and then watch, I think I watched all of your matches and every single one of them like, oh dude, I knew it. I told yeah. you guys, I knew it. Yeah. And so it was really cool to see that. Um, but you, uh, you make it to the semis. How is your, what's your mind at the semis? What are you looking at? What's kind of, where are your thoughts? So after, so I honestly, I, so I felt I had a, I fought my, my buddy Max Hansen in the round of 16 and mm-hmm. I hit a real, I hit like a kind of slick arm bar on it. It was uh-huh. a 50, 50. Um, and I, uh, so I hit that and I felt great. I was super fired up about that one. Then I watched Kieran's match in the quarterfinals mm-hmm. and I'm like, he had such a hard time against the guy who was going against. They went to overtime. Kieran pulls guard, gives up the negative. Mm-hmm. And I thought that was interesting because Kieran posted a video the week before of him practicing wrestling. I was like, okay, so this guy's practicing wrestling, but he won't even wrestle. Uh-huh. That means he, there's no way he's going to wrestle against me because uh-huh. he probably thinks I'm like some world-class wrestler. <laughs> so we go to overtime. I was just trying to body lock pass him the whole match. Uh, we go to overtime. He pulls. And I was like, all I have to do is keep moving mm-hmm. and not get swept. Yep. And that's what I did. And that's why I won on a uh, penalty for that one. Um, and then uh, the semis, so I didn't feel great about it because no one wants to win by penalty. Yeah. Right. But I, you know, I did what I had to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the semis, it's tack it. And mm-hmm. that one was, that was a tough match. And I knew that was going to be the toughest one yet. Mm-hmm. Um, I also, I had no idea what he was going to feel like, right? Because I hadn't gone against him before. I had, had watched him, but his style's kind of like hard to pinpoint, right? Yeah. Because he's good from everywhere. He's good at wrestling. He's, you know, he's beaten some really good guys. He's tapped some really good guys. He's lost some matches that I didn't think he was going to lose. Mm-hmm. Um, so he it was like, I didn't really know what to expect. Mm-hmm. And also then you throw on top the fucking the semifinals um 
and it's the trials and, and it's all huge. the lights go down and the, the we walked out with smoke and I had to pick a walkout song. What song did you pick? I did uh, Astronaut in the Ocean. I don't know. It was like one that I was listening to at the time. It was like a pump up rap. Song. Okay. Okay. Like, yeah. A, yeah. You know, it's a fine song. We were we were raiding. I don't remember who we gave the best one to. Somebody came out to something. Yeah. Something weird on it. And so there was uh but yeah, there were some solid walkouts. Yeah. Night. Jeff Jeff always says he always says just pick a walkout song you like because uh-huh. it's, it's your walkout, not anybody else's. Uh-huh. And you know, I was like that song was in my like warm up playlist, so I just was like, Oh, we'll do this one. I like it. I like it. Um and then the match goes and as we're going, uh we're wrestling and in my head I'm like, I got one shot the fireman's carry this. Yep. Guy. And so we're wrestling. I let him take me down in the no points to sit to guard because I wanted to feel him out from the feet and see uh-huh. kind of how he was moving. Um, I let him take me down. It looks like in the video, like he hit a really clean takedown. I kind of didn't fight it super uh-huh. hard. Um, and we play from the guard. I shoot a K guard because uh-huh. I'm like, K guard works well for me. He defended it in a way I had never seen before. And so I've been working on countering that kind of 50-50 defense yeah. ever since. Um, and so he does that. We reset and the clock hits three minutes. I'm time. I'm feeling my body. I'm like, what's my gas tank? I've got probably, you know, I need to score. I've got three minutes. If no score, we go to overtime. So I need to, you know, think about my energy and think about how long I can wrestle without getting tired and have three minutes in the gas tank. Mm-hmm. So I stand up, I think like 2.30 left, and I try to wrestle him. And I shoot a fire. I timed it perfectly. I got him over, but he just turtled too quickly. Yeah, uh-huh. I, was, I missed it by an inch. Uh-huh. Um, and then he stood up and then I think after that he got in on my leg and I went for a Kimura trap that I shouldn't have gone for and he put me down off of that. And I tried really hard to turtle and I just didn't turtle fast enough yeah. and he got the score. Mm-hmm. And then uh, that was it. How was, I, once it ended, at the end of everything, because you have one more match, you yeah. fight PJ Barth, fought, right? Yeah, I fought PJ. The PJ match, um, it was not my best match uh-huh. i felt like there was a huge like come down and you know pj had the same thing too of course. you know but i just felt like i didn't give him my best look um i was tired for mm-hmm. sure after the tacket match um i've noticed this because i've grappled both tackets now they both have endless gas tank yeah and that is something that's been a problem for me is dealing with like not like my gas my cardio is not usually a problem but dealing with guys who have an endless gas tank is a mm-hmm. problem for me um, that I've been like, especially working on the last few months is partly why we do so much wrestling. Yeah. Um, and I was like, you know, just so dead after that. Uh, cause that was four matches that day, seven already for the weekend. And I'm like, oh, okay, we gotta go again. We gotta do one more. Uh huh. And so we do one more and then, uh, I lost to PJ. And then after that, I was like, at the, honestly, I was just like, I'm glad it's done at this yeah. point because I was tired. Um, but I was like fourth place out of 256. It's not too bad. Um, but it's, you know, you also, you go as a competitor, you always want to win. Of course. You know? So I was bummed. It's, it's hard. Fighting for third place is really hard. Uh-huh. And I knew it was, I knew PJ was going to come at me. Um, I also felt like I could, I could have beaten him and I was really looking forward to our rematch that we had over the summer where mm-hmm. it was a little bit closer, I think. Yeah. Yeah. So you, um, you kind of come home. What's the feel like? Is there, you know, like, uh, there's got to be some respect given on the Chris Wojcik name, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it was crazy because it was like, I, you know, like, I, I didn't become, like, famous or anything, but I, like, it was all of a sudden, it was like, all these people were like, I got to do more seminars. Because at the time, like, going in, it was like, people in the in Chicago kind of knew I was pretty good, uh-huh. you know, but nobody thought I was, like, like world class, uh-huh. you know. And then uh, I remember two weeks after the trials, I go to Toledo to train with Dante and we're driving to training one morning. And I like, and Omar, uh, Omar Ocasio, he runs uh, 10th Planet Lombard. Uh-huh. He sends me a link to the flow grappling rankings and I click on it and it's like, I'm number 12. And I was like, yo, I'm number 12 on flow grappling. Look, Dante. And I show him, and, you know, Dante's like number three. So yeah. he's like, nice, you know, whatever. But for me, I was like, whoa, that's crazy. Um, and then, uh, yeah, a couple weeks after that, I had the Gabriel Almeida match Mm -hmm. and, you know, he's a ADCC vet, Uh who's number one vet. That was a tough match and he's bigger than me. He's like 190, I think 185. He competes at 185. Uh That's the lowest he'll go. 
he was a trials vet or trials champ in Brazil at 88. Okay. So he's a bigger guy than yeah. me. And I weighed in for that at 180 with my clothes on. So I was like smaller guy in the division. Um, stylistically, I felt like watching him, I felt like I could beat him. I watched a few of his matches before the tournament and then I won that one. Uh-huh. And then when you like add the two of them, that was kind of like, you know, within, they were so close to each other. Yeah. And a lot of people don't know this, but I herniated a disc in my back uh, 10 days before the Gabriel made a match. Man. And so I trained once, you know, going into it. And I was like, we just got to, you know, string it together for one match. Uh huh. Because I felt like I was going to beat everybody else in the bracket except for him. Mm-hmm. Now, granted, I got lazy and I almost got Kamora in the first match. Um, not no, Most people don't know that, but I made a mistake. I was in a Kimura. I had to do like late stage submission defense to get out, and eventually I won like uh-huh. 10 0 on that guy. But he almost tapped me. Right oh, away. man. Um, but yeah, that was kind of a crazy, crazy tournament as well. You felt- that was a big payday. It was, you know, $5,000. It's the most I've ever made doing jujitsu. That's awesome. And then did you feel like confident going into that off of the, the trials performance? Yes. Yeah. Yes. I was like, if I can beat Cody and Kieran, I can beat this guy. Yeah. I can beat anybody probably. Yeah. I was like, I felt like it wasn't like, oh, I can beat everybody, but I was like, I deserve to be, you know, competing with the best guys in the mm-hmm. world, you know? Yeah. And that was like something I'd been telling myself, but you know, you don't believe it until you actually like, like I believed it in my head, Yeah. but like I didn't, you know, you don't see it. I didn't, I didn't see it. Uh-huh. You know? So I was like, am I delusional? Or, yeah. you know, what's happening? Uh-huh. So I was like, okay, maybe I'm not delusional a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> hey guys, Josh here. Just wanted to interrupt the podcast really quick and tell you about something really exciting that we have going on. It's simplifyingjujitsu.com. Right now, my second ebook is available at simplifyingjujitsu.com. It is called The Three Lenses. It is written about training method and most importantly, what training methods will work for you as an individual. If you know how you best learn jujitsu, you can start to build a routine and build a schedule to progressive jujitsu way faster than you ever have before. And this ebook that is absolutely free, The Three Lenses, will help you do that. Again, this is only available at simplifyingjujitsu.com slash three. That is simplifyingjujitsu.com slash the number three. Let's get back to the episode. So um, h- how long would you say that you that you believed that in your head before you got to see it in real life? Um. So after the East Coast trials, I felt like my ego got a big bruise. Yeah. Because I, you know, I lost so early mm-hmm. and I got submitted and I, you know, and then, you know, the guy I lost to ended up make, making it to the quarterfinals. Yeah. He had a great run and that made me feel a little better, but I was also just like, I was like, I felt so deflated, Yeah. you know, because I'd done all that. I had done all this work. I had, you know, I'd been injured leading up to that and I was like, oh, maybe I'm not there yet. Uh-huh. Maybe I still have to, you know, I've got to do something to get there or whatever. And then I did a lot of work going into that tournament. I, mm-hmm. you know, I went to BT to train. I went, I drove, I, you know, did a lot of traveling to train. And just the more I saw, I was like, okay, in training, I can hang with the best guys, mm-hmm. you know, in competition, I can't yet. You know, either the time is coming or I'm a gym warrior. You yeah. Know, we'll see what happens. And so I was a little, I felt like just through all the training, that I was like, I could hang with the best guys, but I felt like I hadn't proved it to myself. So yeah. I had, I, I needed the trials to do that. And then now at this point, you're kind of, you're in it. You're starting to get big matchups more often. Uh, you're coming off of just a few days ago as of recording this, uh, a win over David Garmo. Mm-hmm. Uh, me and Jeff got to talk a lot about uh, just the lead up to that one and, and, yeah. and the prep on that one. Uh, but just a lot of big wins you've strung together. Is there anywhere specific that you're hoping to get on or any um, any show that you're wanting to be on or anything like that? Who's number one? So yeah. Because, you know, the thing is, that's just the most watched event right now. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, I was, I actually, I almost got on Grapple Fest because um, I competed in Europe and I was traveling in Europe for a week, you know, just hanging out, seeing friends. Because I, I was born in England. Uh-huh. So I was traveling, seeing friends in England. 
as I'm leaving, I'm literally boarding the plane holding a cinnamon roll. I get a message from Grapple Fest and they're like, hey, can you compete on Saturday? We had a pullout. And I was like, I'm on a plane eating a cinnamon roll. Yeah. I'm not going to make it. Sorry. Uh-huh. And so, you know, that may hopefully, you know, in the future that will come back or, you know, they'll come back to me and, you know, hit me up for a match. That would be awesome because the vibe that those guys have for their events is crazy. Mm-hmm. Um, that's the biggest show in Europe right now, I think. And then who's number one, I think, is the biggest show in the States. And I've beaten four who's number one bets this year. So I feel like that's, I really want, I just want to put like Chicago Jiu Jitsu just on the map, you know? Yeah. Because we don't get that much, we don't get the respect. Definitely you know? not. Definitely not the, the amount that the coast get. Definitely not the amount that Texas, that Austin area gets, yep. stuff like that. And, and man, Chicago has crazy good Jiu Jitsu. And it has for a long time. Yeah. You know, and it just, it's never really gotten the credit that it deserves. Do you think it will soon? Um, I don't know. It's hard. Um, like, there's, uh, like, and I made a little story about this. I put it, uh, I just made a tagged flow and I said that there's more than one gym in Illinois. I, I saw that. I was going to uh, bring that up, actually. They, they get a lot, of, like, Pettigo gets a lot of, you know, and right, rightfully so. Those guys are amazing. Of course. They're great people. They work really hard. Um, I'm friends with, all, like, a lot of those guys. Um, but I feel like in terms of the media coverage, it's like, we don't get the same kind of love, uh, uh, up here in the city. Um, and I, honestly, I don't know why, Uh, I don't know, like, you know, what I had to do to, uh, you know, prove that I'm like worthy or whatever. Maybe it's just the cards haven't aligned. Um, but that's kind of the goal is to compete on those big stages. Um, cause that's kind of. Right now, I, I don't think there's a, ADCC is probably the only higher level, right? Yeah. Um, and, and so, that's once every two years. Yep, that's once every two years. And, you know, you got to stay active, and, mm-hmm. you know, so. I like that. I like that. What if you had, let's say, just dream matchup for your first who's number one? Would you have a dream matchup somebody would want? Um, so I have, I have two. Um, I would want to rematch with Cody uh-huh. because in the flow grappling rankings, Cody's above me still. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I beat this guy. Let me, you know, uh-huh. move me up. So that would be one that I'd like. Um, another would be, um, well, one of them, one of my like kind of dream matchups I already have coming up. Um, it's not announced yet. So I don't know if I can, or it'll be announced by the time this comes out. Yeah. So this will be a few weeks. Yeah. So I've got Oliver Taza coming up. So All that's right. a match that I really want because he's a big name. He's a Donaher guy, you know. He's in the ADCC. He's in ADCC, mm-hmm. um, you know, and he's just, you know, he won the European trials. He's super accomplished, really high level guy. And that's kind of like a match that I've wanted for a long time as well. That's good. That's so that good. That would be another one that I would have wanted for a who's number one. But, you know, just getting the match in general is awesome. What is, what is the show that matches on? So that is on a show called Twisted Church. So they put on, it was either a 205 or a 185 uh, 10K bracket. They're oh. out of Ohio. And All right. they do 10K uh, ADCC rules brackets. So they did a 185 and then the next one's 155. So All right, sweet. I don't know everyone in the bracket right now, but I know uh, Andrew Tackett, uh, Kieran uh, Kichuk's in it, uh, Ethan Kralenstein. Man. It's a good bracket. Uh-huh. Right? A lot of top, uh, Josh Cisneros, a lot of top level guys. Uh, Keith, I think, is a maybe. He's not sure yet, but yeah. he might be in there too. So it's like a super good bracket. So it's like Man. people are going to tune in to watch that bracket, and then I'm the co-main event super fight. All right. So, Sweet, man. Yeah, so that's, that's really cool. cool. Um, when is that? October 22nd. All right. So uh, you've got you've got time to prep for it. Does your prep start as soon as you've signed the contract for it, and it's so time to go? The I don't. I mean, I'm probably gonna. So I've got kind of the next couple of weeks. I've got. Uh, I'm going to Toledo to help Don taper up for ADCC a little bit. Um, I'm gonna. Then I'm going coming home from Toledo and going straight to California to film a Jiu Jitsu X instructional and train right. for a couple of days, uh, which is cool because that's my first instructional. Uh-huh. Um, so I'm excited to do that. And then uh, I'll come back and then I'll probably hit the prep hard. But I'll be training the whole time. You know, there's not really like a. It's not a break per yeah. se, but it's kind of a less rigid training period right mm-hmm. so i'm not like doing my you know i'm gonna miss morning sessions for probably a week or so because i'll be traveling yeah or you know but i'm still training so it's like Makes i won't sense. be following the same kind of like specific training that i do where i'm doing okay turtle every day you know wrestling every day but mm-hmm. i'll still be doing jujitsu every day yeah 
And so uh, how, do you, how do you kind of approach recovering? We talked just about rest days, but is there anything specific that you're doing to be able to train as much as you do and compete as much as you do? Um, yeah, so the biggest things that I think help me is like, the, well, number one is sleep. Yeah, and you and Jeff have the same answer. To yeah, that. Uh-huh. it's like you have to sleep enough. If you don't sleep enough, like, and I made this mistake when I was in my like late teens, early twenties, because uh-huh. I was going to school, I was doing a internship, and I was just you know doing jujitsu, and I would just kind of work like a crazy person. I would get up at five a.m. and lift weights, and I was like that guy, you know, uh-huh. get up at five a.m. lift weights, go to school, go to training, do my homework, go to training again, and then stay up till eleven doing homework, and then get up the next day and do it again. And not only was that a horrible time, but life, life was terrible. Yeah. I was also like burning out. My results weren't great. I was like not doing great in school because of it. It was like just everything suffered because I was neglecting sleep. Oh, that makes sense. So it's like I try to make sure I get at least eight hours every night. What it, do you have any tips for better sleep? Anything that helps yeah. you? Yeah. So I actually, I used to deal with a lot of like insomnia. Uh-huh. Um, so... I think that I okay. This is like my tinfoil hat theory. I think insomnia is overdiagnosed, and I think a lot of people just have neglected stress. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you know, if I just try to make sure my life is like low stress, so it's like stay away from people who make me stressed out. (laughs) You know, like I and I write a lot, so I get like crazy comments from people. Like Uh you know, people tell me to kill myself, and they like are you know they hate me and whatever. (laughs) It's like you know whatever. Okay, I'm like I just try to make sure I'm like. Low, I look at like the least stressed out people who I know, like Jeff. Uh-huh. He's like such a calm guy. I'm like, mm-hmm. you know, he, low stress helps your sleep a lot. Okay. Um, then, you know, like normal things like not too much caffeine, um, you know, alcohol doesn't really help sleep, mm-hmm. um, that kind of stuff. Yeah. So uh, any plans for the future that aren't competitive for you? Do you think about opening your own school, anything like that? Oh, I don't know. It's, it's where I'm at in my life right now. I, this, I don't think having a school would be, because I, I, I teach uh, kids classes right now three days a week. Uh-huh. Um, and so I do that and I like it, um, but it's not like a, it's a job, not a career, yeah. you know? Uh, at least for me right now, for te- just like teaching in general. Like yeah. I like teaching, but I'm not at a point where I would want to like put like the devotion into my st- students that mm-hmm. like I see from Jeff. Yes. And unfortunately, when you are like when you come up in that environment, it's like if I can't do that, there's no point in doing it. Mm-hmm. So maybe in the future, but you know, right now I'm just kind of focused on what I've been doing. That makes sense. So uh, just kind of back to your, this is something we wanted to dig in. We were talking about it in the car earlier. Um, Just back to your mental prep, your mindset for competition. Uh, Last time we talked, we talked just about the idea of, you know, reframing it, being more excited. Um, And I just wanted to, uh, just in the re-listens to that one, I'm like, man, I should have dove deeper on that because there just seems to be a lot of good stuff from it. Um, when you are in just the lead up, you know, to something big, you know, something big coming up, you have Oliver Taza. Mm -hmm. Uh, what is your preparation? Not physically. What is your mental preparation? Yeah. So it's funny. Like I, I thought like when I was not getting like offered big matches, I was like, Oh my God, when I get big matches, I'm going to freak out. And it's like the opposite. I'm like so excited. I just can't like. I can't contain it. Yeah. You know, because it's like, this is what I wanted since I was a blue belt. And yeah. And now I get to do it for real and it's like happening. So it's just like, it's so much fun. Um, and so the fact that like jujitsu is fun or competing is fun now, it's like, it makes the preparation so much easier because I'm excited to do everything. Uh-huh. Like, I'm not just excited to like compete. I'm excited to go to training because if I train a lot, that means I'll do better when I compete. Yeah. Um, I do do like mental training, um, not like, you know, nothing crazy. I'm not like a, I'm not a mental training scientist. Yeah. I just like, I do, uh, I try to do like a mindfulness every day. You know, I'm not like, I don't sit on a cushion and, you know, yeah. look at my Buddha sculpture <laughs> or whatever. I usually just, I try to like go for a walk, you know, and be mindful or I sit and like, like, or I'll drive with no music and I'll just like let kind of be present in the world Uh uh-huh that helps me a lot uh, because it makes me feel more present and then i'm you know i'm not thinking about 
the match that I'm super excited about, I'm like here now. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's really helpful for me. Um, the other thing, I do a lot of writing, you yeah. know, and that helps me. Any anxious thoughts, I just get them out. I'm like, you know, then I go look at it the next day. I'm like, that's a stupid thing to be anxious about. It's okay. You know, and I can kind of work through it from there. How much of your writing is just for you? That, like something you don't, when you write, you like, I don't intend to show anybody this. Um, not as much anymore. Um, but when I first started, it was all for me. Yeah. You know, it was like, I just would do it as a, like, I would just be anxious about things, like social anxiety, normal things that people get anxious about. And I would just write them down. And then I, you know, you go back and you look at what you were so concerned about and you're almost embarrassed. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So I do that. Um, and now it's like, I kind of do it. And then I, I found that like by doing it and then, you know, explaining how I work through something, it helped like for whatever reason, it helps people. And so yeah. I, I just write what I would write for me. I explain to myself like I'm, why something has made me nervous or whatever and what I did and why this is not something you should be nervous about. Uh -huh. And then I just post it and, you know, usually sometimes it helps people. When, when did you start getting the confidence to just post it? Um, I don't know. I mean... I just, I don't know, I just kind of, I'm trying to think about if there was a defining moment. Um, I felt like, so I, you know what it is, uh, the first time I went viral on Medium, I wrote an article about why I didn't like Buddhism. So I read a book and I uh -huh. didn't like it and everybody yelled at me. Uh -huh. And I was like, you know, it. I, I read that, I read that yeah, article. Uh -huh. yeah. You know. In hindsight, I, like I look, it's like there's a saying like if you don't look back at what you did a year ago and think it sucks, then you're not working hard and you're not growing. Uh -huh. And when I look back at that article now, I'm like, oh my god, this kid's so dumb. I'm like, wait, that kid was me, <laughs> you know. But it's like by doing that, I'm like, okay, so that was every I put everything into that at the time. Mm -hmm. And when I look back, I'm like, that's kind of silly. I'm like, so okay, so it's. Every time I look back, it's always going to be silly. So I might as well just, you know, put everything I got into it. Mm -hmm. You know, if I don't, then I'm going to regret, you know, regret not doing that. Uh huh. Is that a view you look at jujitsu with too? Yep. It's like when I get offered a match, you know, I don't want to train half ass and then be like, hi, you know, I should have come to more training. Mm -hmm. I should have worked out harder. I should have done, you know, the sprints or whatever that I needed to do to get my cardio, whatever. I don't want to regret that. Mm -hmm. You know, if I lose, I want to say like, I have no regrets about when I lost to Tackett. Mm -hmm. Like I gave everything I could for that preparation and he beat me, mm -hmm. but I'm not, you know, I don't regret my training at all. And that feels good. That makes sense. So, uh, just as you look at the jujitsu world as somebody who is kind of doing what a lot of people are trying to do. Um, and that is, be on the professional level of jujitsu. Are there any things that you're seeing um, up and comers just not doing that would be super helpful that they're just missing? Um, I think that most people don't drill enough. Mm -hmm. um, when you say drill, what do you mean? Uh, repetition mm -hmm. of techniques on non-resisting opponents. Okay. Like just practice, uh -huh. you know. We do a lot of live, a lot uh -huh. of sparring. Everybody spars, everybody rolls. But, you know, what kind of, I think, separates people is it's not their physical attributes, it's their knowledge and their ability to recall things under, and it, that's like a, I stole that from the Donner Instagram post, but it's like <laughs> your ability to recall technique under pressure, uh -huh. right? And so the way you do that is you develop muscle memory, mm -hmm. and then you train your mind so that you are in a place mentally where you're not freezing up in a stressful situation. Um, and so then, you know, from there, it's like we train, train our body, train our mind, and then we go out and we execute. And I think a lot of people are just trying to roll and they're just trying to fight. And then when they go to compete, they're not thinking about, you know, all the different variables that they can have. They're thinking about winning the fight, if that makes sense. Yeah. How do you choose what to drill? Um, I look at the holes in my game. I'm like, you know, when I watch my matches, what do I think looks wrong? Because when I rewatch my matches, I... It like I'm like, Ugh, yeah, you see, see it, way I see more everything, uh -huh. right? And so I just try to look at, I just try to, you know, I have a vision in my head for what the perfect grappler looks like, uh -huh. and I try to strive towards that. 
when I'm drilling and I'm like, okay, this guy, like for me, for example, I'm like, I used to not be able to finish leg locks from the backside. Uh -huh. So I try to practice and practicing leg locks from the backside. Um, I also felt like my passing was not super dynamic. Uh -huh. So I would, you know, I've been trying to change the way I pass and be a little bit more kind of creative and dynamic. That makes sense. And so, oh wait, creative, that's just an interesting word. Let's uh, just look at that just a little bit. How much of your jujitsu do you feel like is creative in the moment when you are rolling live? Um, I mean, so ideally it's kind of a blend between science and art, right? Yeah. So we know like if I apply this technique, I'm going to break your leg or submit you, whichever one happens first, uh -huh. or choke you or you know, whatever happens first. So I kind of blend like the things I know that work and then I kind of, you know, also look at my own physical attributes. Like mm -hmm. I'm very flexible so I can do things that people can't do from the guard. And mm -hmm. so I try like, you know, throwing my legs up and, you know, scooching my hips in weird ways and doing that kind of stuff. And mm -hmm. from there, it's like, then you kind of discover, you know, maybe they're not new tech. Like Jeff always says, whenever I show him something I invented, he's uh -huh. like, no, you discovered that, <laughs> you know? So it's like, whenever I like discover something, it's like, okay, this, you know, how can I make this better? Yeah. How can I apply like the same kind of fundamental concepts to a move and make it into something that works on real people? That, versus like people in my head. You know? Yeah, that, that, that makes sense. So how many, how many reps of things would you say or how much time of drilling are you usually spending per week? Uh, uh, probably, so minimum three drilling sessions per week of about an hour, hour and a half. Okay. Um, usually Monday, Wednesday, Thursday are my drilling days. Um, or if I'm tired, it's, you know, or no, sorry. It's usually Monday, Thursday, Friday are Monday, the drilling Thursday, days. Friday. Um, you know, just cause I got to find partners, right? Mm -hmm. So that you, I spend a lot of time chasing partners around. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, I use an hour, hour and a half, a uh, three minute timer, 30 seconds off, you know, and I usually it's just whatever the guy wants to work. If you want to be more creative, that's fine. You know, kind of flow uh -huh. um, and try things. Or if you want to just bang out reps and I try to make sure I do both. What do you, do you have kind of like a certain number of reps you're trying to hit on something or is it? You know, you start to do reps and naturally you start to hit it more in training or something like that. Um, I don't, I don't have a set number of reps. I just, uh, I think having confidence in the submission or the technique is mm -hmm. the key. Um, so I try to just drill to the point of confidence. Okay. So what is, uh, before we move from that, um, just one more thought on it. So we, is there a progression for where you, when you feel like you can start to use a technique against a certain level of guy, um, like versus once you learn it and, or do you feel? Uh, yeah, I usually, I mean, I do like kind of the typical, like start with white belts, work my way with blue belts, purple belts. If it works on Jeff, that means it's a great move. Yes. Right. Uh huh. <laughs> you know, that's kind of, or, you know, just any high level training yeah, partner. That makes sense. Uh, and then the, I try to go further than that. So if I'm drilling and it's working on all my training partners, I try to say, okay, would this work on the best guy in the world? Mm -hmm. um, you know, and from there, I'll just try to make sure that my my fin like leg locks. I've been drilling my breaking mechanics a lot for my leg locks, and I feel very confident. Um, and every time I've gotten on a leg, I'm able to apply the break or get the submission very quickly. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. What is your, because uh, last time we did the podcast, I don't remember exactly when it was, but I know that you said you were working on breaking mechanics on yep. leg locks. And so what, uh, is your amount of time you're usually looking to spend on an idea? Is it six weeks, six months? You know, is it, uh, is it kind of just whatever you're feeling like working, whatever you're training for? Uh, it depends a lot on what I'm training for. So it, like for the, uh, for the submission. So I did a uh, Emerald city in June uh -huh. and I did a little overtime training, but not like a ton. And so I, and I lost in overtime in the semis and I was like, okay, I'm not doing, that's not happening again. If mm -hmm. I'm going to lose, I'm going to lose, but I don't want to lose in overtime. Uh -huh. And so we started training a lot of overtime. And that was the first time I ever like looked at strategy for EBI overtime. Uh -huh. And we had Keith out to train. Um, and I was like, you know, Keith is great at overtime. Uh -huh. I'm like, Keith, teach me yeah. you know, how to, how to overtime. Uh -huh. And so we started to, I started to kind of look at overtime, uh, instead of as like, a like a necessary evil, I kind of tried to apply the same mindset that I would apply to like 50-50. Yeah. Um, and so it's really based on what's coming up. That, that makes sense. So uh, we're getting kind of close to the end. Mm -hmm. I always like to finish with a, a certain question. And so today, gotta ask you, what is 
the best piece of jujitsu advice that you've gotten or what springs to mind when I ask you that? The best advice that I got was, uh, I don't know, I might have told this story last time, but I'll tell it again because it's a good story. Um, Jeff, it was before one of the Chicago Opens. Uh, no, no, no. It, yeah, it was one of, before one of the Chicago Opens. And I was like, Jeff, I want to do Chicago Open, but I, I know I won't win, but I want to try anyway. And he's like, if you don't think you're going to win, don't compete. And I was like, no, it was before Worlds. I was like, I, I had lost the first round at Pants, and I was like, I think I'm going to do World. I know I might probably won't win, but I'm going to go anyway. And he's like, if you don't think you're going to win, don't compete. And that just like made me reframe my mindset as a competitor. You know, I was like, I had to go into every match thinking I'm going to win. Mm-hmm. Or, you know, and not like being delusionally arrogant, but like just believing that I have the ability to win every match. When you're talking in your head to yourself, right before a match what does that belief sound like um it's usually it's like there's overwhelming anxiety that's i'm feeling Uh and there's this belief in my head that's like a shield you know it's like i know i can win i know the anxiety is just anxiety it's not like it's all in my head (laughs) it's all in your head yeah um and so i kind of i'm like you know once you get going once you stop thinking you know that this like once the match starts you know you're gonna stop thinking Mm -hmm. So just, just a couple more minutes. You're yeah. good. You're good. Just You'll get out there. You know, kind of like that. Any extra advice for anyone who struggles with competition anxiety? Uh, I mean, it's the biggest thing is like there's two different people who have competition anxiety. There are people who don't want to compete and thus the, therefore they have competition anxiety. Those people, I would say, you know, just train for fun. And if you want to compete, you should compete, right? If you don't want to compete and you go compete against someone who, like, is, you know, thinks they're the best in the world, you're probably going to get, you might get hurt. You're not going to have a lot of fun. Yeah. You know, and it's, you're not, it's going to be a negative experience for you. Mm -hmm. So if you really don't want to compete, then don't compete. (laughs) But if you are telling yourself you don't want to compete because you don't want to deal with the anxiety of competing, but you want, like, you secretly want to, but uh-huh. you just tell yourself you don't because you're anxious. That's yeah. not a good reason to not compete. I would say just do it. You know, like uh, there's like what that quote, like feel the fear and do it anyway. Mm-hmm. It's like I, that would be kind of my best advice. That repetition is the best way to get over it. <laughs> that makes sense. Uh, anything you want to say to finish? Anything you um, you are, you have your Jiu-Jitsu X instructional that will be coming out? Does that have a name yet? Um, I'm hoping that they agree to let me name it Sloth Style Leg Locks, a slower approach. I like that. That's um, good. Uh, that's coming up. Um, got a few seminars coming up. Uh, I can't. Uh, or one of them is so I got one in Libertyville for Chicago people on October 1st. I've got one uh, at Living Art Jiu Jitsu in Willowbrook September 10th. I don't know when this is coming out. But. Uh-huh. And then I've, I'm teaching at a jiu-jitsu camp in South Carolina, which I'm really excited about. That one, I have a lot of imposters. It's me, Gio Martinez. I saw the lineup. Uh, yeah, That's... the lineup is great. Uh, Gabe Tuttle, Gio Martinez, Nathan Orchard, Christian Woodmansey, and uh, one other guy who I'm, I'm so sorry to him for forgetting his <laughs> name, but he's another guy who's really good. And mm-hmm. so I'm really excited to do that. I competed at... Uh, the guy who's running the camp, he ran a tournament, an absolute tournament that I did earlier this year. And then he's, you know, been following. We've been talking all year. And he was like, hey, I really want you to come out and be the last instructor for this camp. So all I'm right. super excited for that. All um, right. And then I thank you to my sponsor, uh, Marshall Paradise. They've helped me a lot this year. Um, you know, even before I was, like, competing in big tournaments, they were still helping me get to, you know, they helped me get to West Coast Trials. They helped me get to uh, Battle of the Beasts, which is that tournament in uh, February in South Carolina, they helped me get to Europe. Uh, so they were really good to me this year. And so really thankful for them as well. That's awesome. And if there's anywhere that somebody wanted to follow you, uh, um, where would yeah. they do it? So best way to follow my jujitsu stuff is Instagram, uh, Chris M. Wojcik. Uh, you can link that. I'll link that. I'll make sure they won't have to yeah. guess on the spelling. And then last thing is uh, my newsletter, uh, my sub stack. It's in my bio on my Instagram. Uh, if you don't have instagram it's called the grappler's diary um, and it's on substack all right sounds good all right chris thank you for being on the show man. thank you so much that was fun yeah
And that is the episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Uh, I really enjoyed getting to sit down with Chris again. Uh, it was really fun. I got to train with him the morning before, or there, that morning, uh, train with he and Jeff that morning. And uh, man, they were zoned in on their training. They are they were sharp on their training. They really were on the same page there too. Uh, I just, yeah, if you get a chance to, to sneak out and, and train with those guys, I absolutely think you should. If you get a chance to talk to uh, um, either Chris or Jeff and pick their brains about anything, I really think it would be worth it for you. I really think you would like it. Um, but yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you guys hope you guys enjoyed this one. I am um, actually heading back to the same place that Chris and I uh, were just talking about. We were just talking about being in Vegas and him doing ADCC West Coast Trials. And I am heading back to the Westgate Hotel where I was stuck for like a week during the ADCC West Coast Trials and uh, or after the ADCC West Coast Trials and uh, heading back and, and getting to compete in Jiu-Jitsu Con. So maybe once I'm done with that, I will do a recap of the last two tournaments that I've done slash Jiu-Jitsu trips slash all the other things that I've been doing over the last few weeks. But until then, uh, yeah, you guys just won't get to hear from me because I have one more really good interview set up for you. And that is with Mahmoud Jabbar. Um, he is uh, he. OK, I'll give it to you. He's not from Chicago. He doesn't live in Chicago. He lives like an hour and a half away. Right. He's in Milwaukee. And I mean, I don't know, maybe Milwaukee people will be offended by this, but it's close enough. Right. I'm, I'm still calling it the Chicago takeover. Maybe we call it Chicago takeover week for the Wisconsin takeover. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what we decide uh, to do. Milwaukee is Milwaukee, Wisconsin. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Anyway, uh, be sure to check out the show next week. Beside uh, ignoring everything that I just said, um, be sure to check out the show next week. You guys are really going to enjoy it. Uh, I will see you then. I hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I hope that you guys uh, learned something from Chris like I did. And I hope today's episode helps you suck just a little bit less at jujitsu. Have a great day, guys. Hey guys, Josh here again. I noticed that the podcast is over, but you are still listening. So you might still be in search of some really good free content that the I Suck at Jiu Jitsu show provides. So if that is the case, if you guys are looking for uh, some solo episodes where you can learn more about efficiency and effectiveness in Jiu Jitsu, I would highly recommend two episodes. The first is episode 111, and that is on blitzing. It's this idea of pacing that most people even black belts don't think about and then episode 129 is on designated winner it is this new training concept uh that we have been doing at my team we've been talking about a lot on the i suck at jiu-jitsu show i've actually been traveling the country and teaching this training method and so as we continue to grow the show i think that is going to be the episode that i push most people to it's episode 129 designated winner learning to master the flow this is kind of the missing piece between drilling and flowing and positional sparring. Uh, you kind of get to combine all three of those things with designated winner and get the effects of all three of those things with designated winner. Uh, also, if you guys are interested, if you're looking for some uh, more deep dives into specific things in jujitsu, you can always go to simplifyingjujitsu.com where I have all of my instructionals, uh, all of my dad's instructionals, and actually a few from my coach, Kyle Watson, my friend, Nick Sanders, uh, John Prine, really some amazing black belts instructing you at simplifyingjujitsu.com. Also at simplifyingjujitsu.com, I have a free ebook for you guys. It is called The Three Lenses. It is the three lenses that people look through to learn jujitsu. Most of us only ever see or learn from one of the lenses. And simply by adding the extra perspective of the other two, you will triple how quickly you get good at jujitsu, especially how well you understand jujitsu. And that is what this free ebook really provides is a very good a way for you to understand the language, understand what's happening, understanding why you are getting better, or more importantly, why you're not getting better. And you can use this 
free ebook and it will help you diagram what you want to uh, getting to the goals you want to get to. And so that is all I have for you guys. Make sure to check out designated winner. Make sure to check out, uh, Make sure to check out everything that I have at simplifyingjujitsu.com, whether it is free or it is paid. You can also follow me on Instagram at the Josh McKinney. If you ever have any questions or comments, or you want to send a suggestion for a suck less Saturday episode, you can email me josh at simplifyingjujitsu.com. Uh, I read all those emails. Sometimes they get repetitive. So I combine five or six emails to be a suck less Saturday episode. Uh, but keep those emails coming so I can keep producing great jujitsu content and I can keep hearing from the people who actually enjoy the show and want to keep hearing the jujitsu content that I produce. Have a great day, guys. I hope this last little few minute clip helps you suck just a little bit less at jujitsu. Have a great day.